it is highly illustrative and instructive to look at the structure of a meteorite in 3D. Now to do this, we put a sample in a tomography machine. This has a turning table on which you put a sample, an X-rays going through the sample, and an image detector on the other side. Then the sample is turned on this turning table of 360 degrees, and we take about 3,000, 4,000 individual images. And from these images, you can reconstruct a 3D image of the meteorite. And this is what is shown in this movie. You basically move through the image stack that has been produced here. What we get is a density contrast image. So opaque faces absorb more um, X-rays than silicates because they are denser. And then everything is inverted and um, the image here looks a little bit like a backscatter electron image. This means metal, like for example over here or over here, is all bright. And then of course the round structures here are the chondrules, the individual ones. And in between the chondrules is the matrix. So what we can do here is we can really see how, for example, metal or opaque faces are distributed throughout the chondrules. So for example, this chondrule here, previously there was some metal inside it and there was more metal at the rim. But in 2D we cannot really see, for example, how much opaque faces are within a chondrule because in one section it might look like there's just um, maybe two volume percent or area percent metal, whereas in another slice there's a lot of metal or opaque phases present. So in here can, we can really see how the amount of metal, for example again here in this chondral here, changes while moving through the chondral here. So the individual elements we see in such a tomography image is called a voxel, similar to pixel with a certain edge length, and the resolution here is a couple of microns, maybe between two and five, six, seven microns, depending on size of the sample, on the, on the machine, and so on. Now in the next step, we can then start to segment the image, which you can see here, into basically um, a more visually easier to distinguish um, representation. The dark bits here are the chondrules, the lighter gray is the matrix in between. This is an Allende sample, a CV chondrite, and white of course is opaque phases. And again you can see here how the opaque phases change throughout this chondral here for example. You can use this to determine the amount, the real three-dimensional amount of opaque phases in the sample, in the chondrules, and so on, which is quite important as for example the um, Opaque phases carry a lot of iron, so this is important to know about the iron distribution. Then finally, what can be done is we can start and um, segment this, this um, entire volume of sample here into the most um, prominent components, which in this case are the matrix, which is blue here, then we can remove the matrix, and we only left with the chondrules, and then we, which was the green, then we can remove the chondrules, and see only, in this case, how mainly sulfides, because Allende is dominated here by sulfides. And then we can see for in, in, in some regions um, that some chondrules have shells of sulfides, which, which can be seen on, for example, here. So this is a shell around a chondral that was there previously or somewhere over here. Now in the last step, um, you would need red-green glasses to fully appreciate that. You can get stereographic images. Now this is a stereographic image here of chondrules in, in one yellow face and in a more brighter yellow face is the sulfide. So if you have red green glasses, you should take some time, it takes maybe half a minute or a minute, and then you can very nicely see the entire structure of this meteorite. And you can then also see that some of the chondrules have uh, are completely encapsulated in the sulfide shell, whereas other chondrules do not have any sulfide, which is quite an interesting feature. And then ultimately, at the end, Again, we can use um, stereographic projection to really move through the entire chondrite here. 
And again, you can see coming up here, there's um, one big chondral here that has these shells of olivine that you can observe. So they're actually like an onion shell. There are a couple of these shells. So there's a shell outside here. Then we move around this entire meteorite. And again, there are some, for example, now this chondral deep in here has no shell at all. This up here has a shell of sulfide. Another one does not have a shell. So this is quite intriguing to observe here. And this is something we can only do really in 3D. So for example, here this chondral has a shell, whereas a couple of others do not have the shell. So there must have been various um, formation histories of these chondrules producing these various appearances here. And this is what we can do when we look at the meteorites in 3D. We can see the distribution of the material. We can see really the sizes of the individual um, components, chondrules. We can see the distribution of components, for example, opaques within other uh, components, and so on. This is what we can do with tomography.